Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Sir Val Delagnev, welcome to the Barbarian Hour. First things first, I got to introduce you. Tell everybody who uh, the guest is tonight. Tonight we have... Olympic bronze medalist in 2012 London, Terval Delagnev. I keep asking to see the medal. Um, they mailed it to you. I, I still haven't seen it. I know you probably got it packed away in some boxes. You just moved to Lincoln. So uh, 2012 Olympic bronze medalist, world bronze medalist, uh, NCAA champion for Kearney in Nebraska, NCAA Division II. Team champions as well, right? Yeah. The intensity of the Olympic Games, I've tried to explain it to people, but you've got these semifinals, and then you've got these gold medal matches, and then you've got the repechage matches, and then the, uh, the bronze medal matches, right? And the, what people don't understand is how it was when you wrestled on 2012. It was all one day. It was all one day. You were wrestling a whole Olympic tournament, Terval, in like what seemed like, because you guys were the evening session, I want to say. Yeah. You were the evening because the heavier guys were evening session. And it was like a five. It was a noon or a two and a five. I want to, I forget what it was, but it was two sessions each day. But I remember you guys wrestled an Olympic tournament in freaking an hour and 40 minutes, man. Like three of the biggest matches of your life were funneled into an hour and 40 minutes. And it was like, it's so intense, the level that it goes to. And I remember I was in the end zone. I have the video of you and Ty Mazov coming out of the uh, tunnel. I don't know if I've ever sent, sent it to you. But it's just like this moment, I was just so jazzed up, man. And, and it was like real weird. You shot in on him and you paused. And he like strapped up a cradle and he did a blind, like a Kale Sanderson blind roll, roll through cradle. I mean, obviously you remember it. You know what happened. Yeah. And it was just like this, this moment where there was, dude, it was such a quick, it was that. You paused for that. And then he, you know, and it just happened. And, you know, and you lose in the bronze medal match. And then in Rio, I can't believe you were even able to wrestle in Rio, dude. You're back. I was like watching you and your semis and your, uh, your bronze medal match were two of the hardest things for me to ever watch, man. Cause like you're a great guy and I obviously want to see a win. But, man, you just weren't your you, – and, you know, you were hurt. You were hurt really bad, right? Well, I didn't even want to – I mean, that, that was tough for me because I, I didn't even want to walk out. I wanted to forfeit. And then the coaches kind of convinced me, like, yeah, you got to finish your tournament. But I'm like – like, at that point, it wasn't even like a win or lose. It was like, can I get hurt more? You know, so, so I, I kind of – I mean, I went out there and just got rolled. I basically just went out there and got rolled up. Did because, they get it? Do you think the guys you were wrestling got it? I don't know. I mean, I'd imagine. I mean, I always had heaters with Gashami and stuff, so I'm sure he was happy to tech me real quick. And, yeah. and then, you know, I mean, at that point, I don't. I mean, I don't know what they thought, but I know that I I couldn't train from from the trials in April until the Olympics in August. I probably wrestled live three times. And I couldn't – and then the whole Olympic Games, from the day we got there, opening ceremonies or like two days before, all I did was I walked on the treadmill for 40 minutes and then I did a couple minutes of planks every day. So I, I didn't touch, I didn't drill, I didn't lift. Wow. I just did – I walked on the treadmill for 40 minutes and then I did some planks. Um, and then the day of the tournament, I took a bunch of prednisone and I went and I scrapped. So I had – Magomedov, first round, who was a returning silver. And in my head, I was like, okay, good. Like, I either wanted a really, really bad draw or a really, really good draw. Because with a really good draw, I might have could have squeaked out, out a couple matches. With a bad draw, I was like, okay, good. I got, the Olymp I got the returning silver medalist, so I'll lose first round. And the guy's good. Because I didn't want to get, like, someone who's, like, middle of their pack and, like, lose to someone. And, like, kind of, like, I wanted to lose to someone good. So I could be at least, like, okay, he was good and then so I ended up beating him I took him down the last 10 seconds and my first thought was like 
yes, I got it. And then my, but I, and then my second thought was like, this is where my, my mind went was like, Oh crap, I got to wrestle another match. Like that's where like I was jacked. So I couldn't like, and then my back seized up in the second match against Poland. And then it was just, I wanted to forfeit. They're like, no, don't forfeit. So I was, you won. I, mean, I couldn't get my stand. You won. <laughs> you, you won. Yeah. The match, but it, it was, was, it's it was amazing. You won. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Like, I guess my biggest thing is you're a father of three. You know, what do you, how, how do you impart this in, as some type of wisdom I don't know what direction you go. Like, hey, don't go out where your coaches are telling you where you could get more hurt, or you always finish everything to the best of your. Where do you where do you go with that as a father, as a coach? Where do you go is when you're imparting wisdom on people? You went against every fiber of your being and your instincts. I want to be able to walk again, right? Yeah. But you still went out and you strapped it up, man, and you still did it. It was hard to watch. I know it was probably a lot harder to do than it was to watch. But as a Terrell fan, man, it was like, yeah, this guy's not right. I mean, everybody knew what was going on, right? Americans did. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I can, if I have any, I don't know if I'll ever use that moment for, for, for a teaching opportunity. I mean, that's kind of just my story. That is what it is. I, I went out reluctantly. I'm glad I didn't get hurt. I mean, I don't know if I needed it. I don't know if there was any inspiration or anything that anyone gained from me going out and just getting rolled up uh but because because again it was like I, I i just had to protect myself i couldn't even tie my shoes without my core just spasming so it was like i couldn't get my stance not everything hurt so it was just really bad you know scary so I don't know if i handled it well so I, I don't know i mean i don't know if i draw anything from that i just know that as a whole, you know, that's just a piece of the story, you know, that, that a lot of things happened. And I definitely think, I mean, I, I have, I have greater empathy for injuries. You know, I know that I, um, I definitely will have, have a soft spot for, you know, not, not pushing through injuries for the sake of, of glory if they're if they're if they're really bad you know i mean i think there's there's an element to wrestling that it's like you know you definitely push through some stuff everyone's hurt but i don't know like i mean part of me goes back and says like if i had a time machine would i would i be done what if what if i could be done in 2014 you know and never never experience any back pain like may i like i'm i i would say I'd maybe do it you know i mean i would give i'd give up an olympic team and a world team and to have my healthy back, you know, so, so whether or not that's a super, you know, motivational, you know, inspirational sort of quote, maybe not for some, but I know, I know the t-shirt slogan is always, you know, you know, one more chance at glory, but I won, I won some more things and I added to my resume after my back injury, but I would, I, I probably would relinquish those for a healthy back. What was the actual injury, for, you know, for people who don't know what the actual extent of the injury was, and when did you do it? Um, it first started in January 2015. I, got, I went to the Bundesliga, and I got off the plight, and then I had some, like, stuff down my legs. So I came back um, after that the match, and I just went to the trainer, and I'm like, yeah, I feel it down my legs. And they're like, oh, that must mean it's your spine. So I went and saw a spine guy, and then he's like, well, your discs look fine. Basically, I got, I got, it was a misdiagnosed injury. I, I, got, I got spooked into thinking it was my spine. So then I started, I bought an inversion table. I started going inversion table like crazy, stretching. Hanging, up, hanging upside down. Hanging upside down, stretching, 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 upside down, stretching. Then I'm kind of OCD, so I just overkilled it and just get worse and worse and worse until my disc did blow out. So then I had to have a back surgery. Um, lumbar disectomy L4, L5. And then finally, I mean, after, you know, after 10 weeks, it was getting better. Then I started upside, hanging upside down again, upside down. Then it got worse. So I'm thinking like, damn, this sucks. So finally, I found this osteopath doctor who in Colorado, it was like a month before the World Cup in 2016. 
And I had to pull out of the World Cup because my back just had gotten real bad. And she's like, this isn't your spine. This is your ligaments. So basically she said, my ligaments that attach my spinal cord to my pelvis, iliolumbar ligaments, are super loose, too much stretching. They're too stretched out. And so as she said, there, there's a bunch of tears on them. And so I started getting these injections like PRP, prolotherapy. So it's like um, they take your blood cells, they take the platelets out of your blood, and then they re-inject them into the injury. And so I, I had a lot of, like, it helped, but it wasn't soon enough. So I went to the Olympics, I gave it what I got, it came back. But I had like six or seven over the course of two years. And it kind of sturdied everything up. So, but that's why I felt so loose. It felt like my upper body was going to slip off of my lower body. Wow. I mean, that's how loose my wow. core was. So it was, that's what the Olympics were like. So it was miserable. And now it's kind of like chronic pain. There's, there's that one chronic ache, like there's an ache to it, but I'm definitely functional now. I can wrestle, you know, it feels, I have good days. I have more good days than bad days, but it was a, I just, yeah, I just misdiagnosed and then I handled it bad and I just panicked a little bit. So I've made it worse for myself. So I guess the thing I want to know about this back injury and how it affected you, I want to know how it affected you. We know you're obviously a top level coach. They don't pick your name out of a hat type of guy. You are obviously, <laughs> you know, what you did at the Ohio RTC. I think obviously that's a lot. What you helped build there. You were the mainstay of the Ohio RTC. What you built there. And that's why you're now in Nebraska, right? Would you say, was that fair? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think the Ohio RTC, I spent eight years there coach, uh, training as an athlete and then five years as a coach. And, I mean, I, I learned a lot there. I grew a lot. I mean, obviously, that was, that was my whole senior-level career pretty much. You know, I spent one year at UNI, and then the rest of it was in that room. So I think, you know, I was able to do a lot of cool things there and, it was uh it's definitely a place that that i i'm very i'm very happy to be a, to have been a part of it so everything you needed there you did there right you, and then Kyle Snyder comes along what was it like training with Kyle Snyder you know then coaching Kyle Snyder you know you guys were training partners you're you're in the same world teams together right you're in the same olympic team together right but you can't really do much during that Olympic team you guys were on together, right? So now you you have to sit back and reflect, and you know you guys are the same club at that point in time, right? How is mm -hmm. that? What's that like when a guy like that comes along? He's coming up, and maybe you're, you know, on your way down. You're having some injuries, and you're in your last Olympic season, his first Olympics. What's it like when Kyle Snyder comes around? And, you know, JD was around. You had JD Bergman to train with, Miles Martin to train with. You had all these guys to train with at the Ohio RTC. And then Kyle Snyder, obviously, is pretty special. What was it like with 97 kilo guys in the training situation when you had Kyle Snyder, JD Bergman, and all the guys at Ohio RTC? I mean, it was great. I mean, those are some of my good friends. And I, I had a good situation. I, I mean, obviously, my last couple of years, I, I couldn't really utilize it. I mean, I, I trained as much as I could. And I, I, I think another thing is that that was another thing that was just faulty in my mind is, is the way that I understood performance was just incomplete. I think that, you know, we, we, I had, I had been sold, whether it was just from general United States wrestling mentality or whether it was my own neurotic behavior but something inside my subconscious said, you have to be able to do X, Y, Z worth of work to be able to be a champion. And then so once I stopped being able to do that work, I had mental anguish because I, I thought, well, if I can't do this, so then that's where I was kind of in this, this, this whirlpool, this downward spiral of I was trying to force Anytime I, I felt decent, I try to force a ton of work into it and then I would get hurt a little worse or I'd come out of it not so good because I'm trying to play catch up where the reality is, is I was 30 years old 
I didn't need that work. I just needed to do it a little smarter. And I, I could have, I could have, you know, ixnayed the minutes and, and, and the pounding and I could have just wrestled and stopped before I got hurt. But it was always like, oh, more, 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 more. So that was, that was, you know, that transition was tough for me mentally and I had to learn it the hard way. But yeah, I mean, Kyle got there, you know, we, we hit it off. He was, uh, you know, I was kind of in the middle of my, basically just putting my finger on my, my, my wrestling worldview, you know, all the stuff we talked about, you know, my identity, how I wanted to treat people, what I wanted to get out of wrestling, how I wanted to leave wrestling. You know, if I won, if I lost, you know, how, who am I going to be? How am I going to get more out of myself? What am I going to be scared of? Why am I scared of this? How am I going to break these barriers? And so I was just conceptualizing a lot of this stuff and I would just kind of talk to the guys and he was just one of the guys who just really latched onto it. It make, made a lot of sense to him. And so he started to just really conceptualize these ideas that we would talk about and just really weave them into his wrestling. And so, you know, he just, you know, whether it was technical, um, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever it was, we just, we, we had a very similar worldview. And I think we had a similar mind uh, on how we perceive things. And so I think the things that were making sense to me just instantly started to make sense to him. And so it was, it was a good situation for, I mean, obviously, you know, there was, there, and, and along the way, if I'm being honest, there was some jealousy. Obviously it was like, I'd see him getting all the, you know, he won the worlds. I never won the worlds. He won the Olympics. I never won the Olympics. So it's like, I'm seeing this kid who, who, in my head, I'm thinking like, man, like why, why couldn't there be a Tervel when I was 20? Why do, why, why do I have to be the Tervel to his Kyle? Why couldn't someone else be the Tervel to my Kyle? Like where was, where was my Tervel? Where was my 30-year-old mentor to this level? Like I had mad coaches, but for the most part, I had like, I mean, just stuff, the stuff that we were talking about you know, never got brought up with anyone in my life. So, so there's a lot of jealousy there. It, not a lot, but I mean, I definitely had to work through it, right? Like, I never acted upon it. It wasn't like I was bitter toward him, but you know, just like anything, like that's the stuff you want and you see someone else getting it. And so, but obviously Kyle was able to do great things. And, you know, over the years we, I mean, he, you know, he's, he, he, he went off on his, on his way and, and, He's a good man. He's a good man. We, you know, we had a, we had a close relationship there for a while. So it was, I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from him, you know, uh, as well. Just, just watching him apply and, and become some of these things that, that I understood, but maybe couldn't ever embody, you know? When he leaves, what goes through your head and how do you feel? Are you, do you feel betrayed? Do you feel, are you just sad? What are your emotions when he leaves? And, and how does he, does he tell you guys he's leaving? Does he just one day, hey, was he ghost? What happened when he left? Um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't involved in that process very well. I mean, I think for one reason or another, I had fallen out of his inner circle. And so, you know, I was helping him with his wrestling. But, I mean, I kind of found out, yeah, like relatively, he kind of laid it on the coaching staff. And I was one of the later guys to find out. but. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it was tough. Obviously, I think it was one of those situations that that you think again. It's 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 it's, it's but it's all it's all petty, right? I mean, it's like every everyone's life is their life, and so at the end of the day, you you can't get you you shouldn't. There's no you have no no ground to be disgruntled at other people's choices as far as like. Things like, like, unless they're directly just totally shaming you or slamming, it's like he thought he could get, he thought he wasn't getting what he needed and he wanted something different and he thought he was going to go to this other place. Now, obviously, the optics were terrible because Ohio State, Penn State, you know, recruiting, blah, 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 you know, and so it was, but, but yeah, I mean, he, he thought he needed something different. He went, he was going to go to a place that he thought he could get it and, you know, the stuff that, the stuff that I struggled with was just like, like, are they really better than me? Are they really better coaches? Is it really a better situation? Like, what did I do wrong? Like, like the, the petty stuff that goes through your head anytime you're 
you're challenged in that way where it's like, is it, is it, am I deficient? Like, could I have done it better? Is it something, is it me? Is it me? Right. So, but I mean, those are things that that's, those are constant questions in your life that you're going to have, you know, people are going to make decisions and you're going to have to self-diagnose. And sometimes it is you, sometimes it's not. And so, um, that, that was, that was the reality of the situation. It's, I, I didn't like it. I didn't, I don't know if I, I wasn't a fan of the decision, but I respect, you know, what he wanted out of it. And he had to make it. When he straps up in the stars and stripes, you obviously still cheer for him. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's people in Ohio, man. They don't like him and they don't cheer for him. I'm not one of them. I won't do that. I, just, I can't do that. You know, man, like, uh, I, I can't do that. I, it's just me personally, but there are people that are, they're hardcore Ohio state people who hate him. I just can't imagine that. And that I'm going to tell you this right now. Kyle Snyder's only ever treated me like gold. You've only ever treated me like gold. I can't imagine ever cheering against you guys. That's just me. Me per, That's the American Homer in me. Maybe a little nationalism, right? But I can't <laughs> go against you guys. I, you know, like you're, you're Americans. I mean, I can't do it. I just, I can't, it's not in my being. I can't do it. They got some rabid fans, man. It, it, it's, it's, I can't do it. I don't know about you, but I just, I can't do it. Can't cheer against the guy. Now him and Jaden get in a match. Are they getting a two out of three? I don't know if that's going to happen. No idea. Now you have my interest. I'm excited. J- Once again, another guy who's never done anything but treat me like gold. Jaden Cox. Love the guy. Crazy stuff happening with the weigh-ins. I don't know if we're going to see that or not. You know, obviously you and I, we're not the arbitrators, right? We don't know that, yeah. right? Yeah. But man, the Ohio people want him to lose if they wrestle off. I just can't, I can't imagine being like that. I want America to have the best guy. How about that? Yeah. No. And I mean, I, I definitely, I mean, yeah, I can't, we've, we've been through too much. Like I'm not going to just start hating on the guy. It's, you know, just because he yeah. went to a rival school. It's, I it's, can't do it. I just, I can't do it. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna. Yeah. So, I mean, it bothers me though, you know, but I can't control those other people. Like you're saying, you got to live with those things and, you know, maybe evaluate who you're hanging out with. If that's how they feel about a guy. I don't know. But, yeah. um, okay, so the move. Let's talk about the move. We talked off camera about the move. Why this move to Lincoln, Nebraska? And f- first off, what's the – it's Nebraska RTC, right? Uh, Nebraska Wrestling Training Center. Okay, ne- Nebraska Wrestling Training Center. There's more to this move than I think people can understand, Terval. Um, when Terval Delagnev leaves Columbus where he's lived longer than – you and your wife lived there longer than anywhere else you lived in your whole entire life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this is an easy decision. It's not easy, right? But when you get the call and you move to Lincoln, Nebraska, what, what, is, what are the push and the pull factors of you leaving Ohio State to go to Nebraska? I mean, I think it was somewhere we always wanted to end up. I mean, it was my wife's family is all here, uh, my kids' cousins pretty much all of them my my best friends from from college it's just anytime we had vacation we came here you know i mean this is what this is what i would consider home i mean this is where i felt like home this is where we would always visit this is where when we when covid shut us down we spent you know a couple months here last summer so it was just I don't know. It's, it's always, ever since college, it's always felt like, like this is where we wanted to end up. And, and, and Tom had always known that. I mean, he, he, he knew that at some point we were going to try to get back. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not hugely ambitious when it comes to, um, you know, money or, or titles. I mean, I definitely want to provide for my family and I love that I can do it and the, you know, doing things in the sport I love, but it it doesn't matter. Like being around family matters to me and I don't need to be in a certain position or a certain place or a certain title to feel like I'm making a difference in wrestling and affecting people. And so uh, this move was, I mean, obviously I have a good relationship with the staff and it was very much a family decision. Mm. But also, you know, just, I mean, another chapter. I mean, I think this is 
an elite university. They've had really good teams. They've, you know, what Coach Manning and Snyder have done here is, you know, they've built up a program that's pretty strong. And obviously with Jordan being the, the headliner for the club for the last decade, him and James, and it's been on everyone's, you know, radar, but I think it's, it's a fun, it's a fun challenge. I've never really for 12 years, I haven't been around different teams, you know? So it's fun to, to see how, to keep learning, to see how others operate. And I have nothing but love for Ohio. I mean, coach, coach Ryan did so much for me. He's the man, love him so much. He's a good friend. I always respect him. He's just great people. He's salt of the earth, man. He's, he just gets it. And Jay, Ralph, Bo, I mean, Logan, all those guys, just what, what good friends. They called me today trying to mess with me. So it was fun to, fun to chat with them a little bit, but, but yeah, this, this move was, it was one that was going to have to happen. I mean, it's just, uh, we value our kids growing up around family too much to not do it. How far do the McCurdy's live from you guys? The McCurdy's? Yeah. Um, well, so Keenan is probably about 10 minutes on this, down the same street. Are you serious? And Marty, his dad, is probably about, I don't know, seven minutes into town. And those are some of your best friends, right? Yeah, and Jeff Rutledge, who's also – he, wow. him and Keenan uh, coach together at Lincoln East High School. He's, he's in town 12, 15 minutes into town. So they're all here in Lincoln, and it's just – it's just been, it's, it's been fun. I mean, we, my wife and I went on a date for the first time since, since COVID was a thing. We, Look we pitched, at you two. We, we, we pitched the kids off to grandma. And <laughs> nice. Down. So that's just stuff that people take for granted. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's, I mean, it's just been weird. I mean, in Ohio, it's like, I don't know. Do you call a babysitter? Do you, do we wear masks? Do they wear a mask? I mean, are people even babysitting during COVID? It was just weird. Yeah. So, it's just a strange dynamic. So it's just really nice to have family in the area help my, you know, with a new baby. My, my, my wife has help if she needs it. Congratulations and, on the daughter. Thank you. How old is she now? Six months. Six months. What's her name? Malin Anna Delagner. Okay. Uh, and I want to say one of your sons is Isaiah. Is that correct? Isaiah and Titus. And how old are Isaiah and Titus? Eight and six. Eight, six, six months. Yeah. You, my friend, don't sleep much. Well, maybe your wife doesn't. Yeah, she's been grinding. <laughs> I mean, but but May, May is a really good baby, though. I mean, she's much, much more chill than the boys, so that's been a blessing. <laughs> are, are, are they into wrestling yet? Not yet, but I mean, I'm, I think I'm going to let them dip into this club when we start the youth program. They'll just, they'll start, they'll do some jumping jacks and some single legs. I don't know. I, I just, I don't know where I stand. I go back and forth where it's like, sometimes you feel like you got to get them in because people are getting ahead, but then it's like, I don't know if they got it, they got it. Yeah. If, I, I agree with that. I'm very much. So here's what I'm doing right now. I just take them around it. If they want to do all the stuff, cool. We're not going, I don't want to go compete, man. I think that Moran really got that right with, uh, Carson I really feel like he got that right with Carson and then Carson never made it out of a sectional tournament or to a sectional tournament till his junior year of high school think about that because he was injured and we because we wrestled too much yeah we're, we're, we're too much wear and tear but um that that decision's coming for you and I think getting him around it is the biggest thing maybe not even in there seeing it in front of him and then maybe running laps and you know starting to build the Love and the fun for it, I think, is uh, the biggest thing for me. And, you know, maybe take him to some camps, let him run around, let the Burnett brothers push him around a little bit, and play with the big kids and get hit with a dodgeball in the face, maybe. I think <laughs> that's, the, that's the biggest. Like, creating a positive association is really what I'm doing. My kids are three and five, man. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. You know, and, and my one son, Ferdinand, he's pretty uh, – he's athletic and he gets the kinetics, you know, the body kin kinesiology of it. And he enjoys it. But the thing with him is he's a little too competitive for my liking. 
Got yeah. And everything. And he's super obsessed with winning and winning at card games and winning at board games and winning at tiddlywinks and winning every race and doing the most drop steps. And sometimes you just got to calm down, dude. You're five. Relax. <laughs> No Tulsa in my future as of right now. You know what I mean? I don't see a lot of that stuff. Um, they'd have to want to do it. So yeah. I'm not, I just, I think that's for me personally, it's just a bit much, you know? Um, no, I hear you. That's, that's how it goes. I mean, like you're saying, everybody's got their different path. Uh, last thing, let's just talk about the club. Currently the roster of athletes, James Green is with Virginia Tech now. Yep. With SCRTC. And then Jordan is going to be with Penn, right? Yep. So you now effectively come in as the head coach at Nebraska for the RTC, Regional Training Center. Um, Berger, Tyler Berger is one of your athletes, right? Who do you guys try and what, what – are, are you going after any athletes? Do you have any athletes besides Tyler Berger? Who else do you guys, you know, want to have – is Dudley with you still? Who, who's, who, who can people train with when they come – you know, to, to Nebraska and Lincoln for RTC. So yeah, Dudley's still here. And then right now we're just trying to figure out, so we're going to wait um, till the Olympics. And until so, so this weird year is kind of weird because no one graduates. Right. So it's like, we're going to try to pick up other athletes. We're going to go after guys. We have guys pegged. We want more athletes and, you know, coach Manning is on the grind fundraising. So, he de- we definitely want more senior level guys and we want to keep our guys too. Um, you know, I know that there's going to be some guys from Nebraska that want to still train that graduate. So, you know, want to keep the guys, we want to get new guys, but it's kind of a weird year because it's like, well, are you done? Are you going to take your extra year? What do you want to do? So it's kind of hard to peel existing athletes away from their RTCs unless they're really struggling. But, like, if they're doing well, they don't want to change. And then um, otherwise you get graduates, recent graduates. But technically no one graduates this year, so at least eligibility-wise. So it's a weird year for RTC recruitment, so to speak. But but uh, I'm pretty pumped. I'm, I'm still going to go with, with, uh, with Desi to the Olympics. So he's been coming out. He's going to come out a week out of every month up until the Olympics. Okay, um, where, where is Amar? Is Amar in BC right now, or is he in Columbus? No, Where's he, Amar? He's, he's in Columbus, so he's in Columbus full time. But he he came out a week um, in April, and then he's going to come out a week in May and a week in June. And I'm going to Poland with him, and I'm going to the Olympics with him. So I want to I want to kind of honor my commitment to him, and I want to. I mean, I think he's he's awesome, man. He's I think he's got really really good skills, and if he can just get over the hump mentally, I think he can he can really do some damage. So, you know, I believe in him and I think he's one, you know, he's a really good wrestler. He, he understands the sport really well. And so I want to, I want to help him as best I can. So, you know, he'll be dipping in and out and it's been good for the guys here to see him train and, you know, especially the big guys. And so, and train with them, but, but yeah, we, we got, we're obviously, I mean, that's, that's constant. You're constantly looking for new guys and competitive guys, but, for the most part right now, we're just in a holding pattern waiting for, for the guys that, you know, we've reached out to, to make a decision on whether they're done or not. What's your vision for this club? What does Terrell Delagnev want to get out of building a strong RTC in Lincoln, Nebraska? Um, I mean, obviously, it's going to be that idea that for what, what RTCs are for, right? I mean, it's help people with their Olympic dream and also help the college program be able to, you know, see elite. I mean, when you see elite every day and when you're around elite and when you're around professionals and when they rub off on you and when you can keep your leaders, you know, if you guys, if you have elite guys on the team, it's, you know, you have them for four years and they leave. So RTCs, it allows you to kind of really, I mean, by the time guys become leaders, they're out, but it's like you can keep them around. They can keep leading. They can keep being around. They can, you know, they can inspire. And so I think that this idea of keeping your your leaders, keeping wisdom more, you know, longer in the room and bringing in guys with like-minded ideas to fuel off of each other, 
is really powerful. And that's what the RTCs are about. And then we're also doing a kids club, which is also something that I'm pretty pumped about, but we're gonna start a youth club and, you know, just kind of like what you were talking about. I just want to give a, give an option for youth kids to maybe not participate or get engaged in the rat race of it, but maybe just learn the art you know, get an appreciation for the art and the mastery of wrestling and, you know, compete when they're ready, but, but just try to get them to really, really understand that there's, there, there's a beauty to knowing all the moves and there's a beauty to know, to understanding wrestling at a deep level and being excited about it and just falling in love with self-improvement and, and then taking the competitive piece, you know, after that. Last thing I'm, I really do actually have for you. I'll, I, as if I'm going to sign off and talk, tell people to go to, you know, BA hour, the barbarian hour, you know, our, our, our partner, Josh Aspie and barbarian apparel before we do that. Okay. How do you feel about Gable Steveson's chances in Tokyo? Everybody. I don't know if people understand the levels of uh, the big men. There are levels to this and we've got two really good, guys who you competed against right mm-hmm. Trish Bailey and Taha Gul, right yep is can he be at their level by August can he you know can he make a dog fight out of it is he gonna shock them from what you've seen of him can he roll at that level is he medalist material absolutely I mean he's definitely medalist material um can he win yes I think that that's gonna be the big question um, I think matchup wise, I mean that 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 young Russian ha- is really good too. By the way, He's okay, that new Russian who and then just obviously play. and then obviously Desi Desi Desi's De- a freak man. Desi's really good too, and Desi is really good. And I'm telling you, if, I mean, he's just really he's a pure wrestler. I, I think if he on on any given day. If he if his mind's right, he can wrestle. So, but yeah, I mean, I think Gable can. I think he. I, I for some reason stylistically, I, I I would I would think Petrushvili would be a more manageable match for him. I think Agul. I see him having a harder time with Agul. I can see him, you know, picking picking up some 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 of those cleaner scores against Petrushvili. Agul is kind of a dog. He muddies the water with the hand fight with the pace. So, um, Gable's got to, you know, obviously stay in the fight. Sometimes, sometimes he plays the unfocused game, but when he's focused, I mean, he's in there with anybody. So it's going to be fun to watch. He's definitely one of the biggest, biggest, uh, you know, he's going to be one of the most fun, intriguing people to watch in the bracket as far as, you know, you know, will he, won't he kind of thing. So I'm excited about it, but obviously, you know, I got my coach Desi, so Lord willing, you know, they all get in there and just scrap, may the best man win. It's going to be a great wait. It is going to be a great, I am like super pumped about it. Like it is going to be, yeah, that weight has got me. Yeah. Like you're saying the Russian guy can't, I, can you ever count a Russian out in any of the six weights? I mean, geez. well, have you seen him wrestle? I, the guy you're talking about, I've most seen. Just to just he wrestled in the Europeans. He got second to Agul, and then he just qualified the weight. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I'm he a, wrestled in the qualifier. Yeah, because the heavyweight wasn't qualified yet. I haven't seen him yet. I got to go back and watch him. Bro, he's got he's small and he's young, but he has speed and he has skills. He has some sick shots, fast, fast to the leg, low, medium, high. I really, think really I good. saw him wrestle Boltakayev. I think I saw him wrestle because Boltakayev went up to went up, didn't he? At some point, I don't know. Yeah, when. I think I saw him wrestle Boltakayev. Yeah, so I think he won their nationals, but they've been using another guy. So they took they sent a different guy to World Cup, but this guy is relatively recent. And watch him with me. He he's he's got some skills. I mean, I don't know if he's at you know. Odd goal put it on him a little bit, uh, kind of big big dog him. But he hit he hit a nice he has some nice skills on odd goal even. And he's just I think he's the kind of also the fact that he's a little bit smaller, a little bit fresh on the scene. 
I feel like he's one of those guys that is going to get good pretty quick. When you train Desi, do you one day simulate Akul, one day Petrosvili, one day Stevenson? Is that is that how you tra- – I don't even – like how do you train a guy at that level? How do not, you, not, how did you train at that level? Not this far out. I mean, right now, this far out, it's more like personal skills. I mean, it's more like positional. It's like if you get in this position – you got to have moves here. If you got to get, you're getting this position a lot. Let's get really good here. Um, when you get in, you know, so it's, it's, it's all it's hand fight. It's set up routine. It's get to the legs. It's well, you get to this shot often, but you have a hard time finishing. So, you know, where do you want to go? Do you want to shoot a different shot or do you want to get good at this finishing this shot? So general skills that you spend your high percentages in you wrestle, you're always going to need to defend your legs. You're always going to need to hand fight. You're always going to need to, get to a leg and then there's a bunch of different ways to finish and then just belief in it belief in the areas that you that, that you can wrestle in. awesome man i love hearing the insight it's yeah i i just love hearing your wisdom your insight i get stoked to hear it i like to i like to listen more than that. i should probably talk less and listen more especially when you're speaking you got anything else for me Anything on on the on Nebraska? What's going on out there? Shout outs? Anything you got for me? No, I mean it's it's been awesome. I mean it's been super hospitable. The whole staff here, Manning, Snyder, Coke, Ashberger, they've been great. The school, really inviting atmosphere. The team, really really cool, really chill. So, I've just really enjoyed it. You know, it's been fun. It's been a homecoming. It's been fun to be home life and then work I've, i feel like i've integrated well and everyone's helping get this club off the ground so i'm i'm excited about all of it man just new new time new journey so appreciate everyone that helped make this happen and i uh obviously much love much love back to to my ohio boys do they make them nicer or better guys than robert kokish <laughs> the guy's like the nicest dude ever <laughs> Off of the earth, man. Oh Crazy. my god. Was he South Dakota? Yeah. Oh my god. The dude's like the nicest guy I've ever met. He is. I'm just like, this dude's so nice. So all right. Let me sign us off from the BA hour. Uh we 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 held you. I, I, I asked you if you're all right with overtime. You said you were all right with overtime. So of course okay. I took advantage of the overtime. Uh check out all of our deals at uh backslash BA hour. We send in some swag out. I gotta get you some swag for taking care of us. I'm going to cut this real quick. Terrell Delagnov, thank you for the time. Stick around, all right?